Have you ever experienced something so crippling in your life that has made you feel broken? I have. Are you someone who has a giving heart but is struggling to feel good themselves? Are you consistently putting your needs aside to take care of everyone else? If so, you're not alone. Giving starts with giving to yourself so that you are able to give of yourself to other people. Isn't it time you took back control and discovered what makes you tick? Join me in my journey and find out how you can feel better about yourself, live your best life, and share that with others. Thinking of yourself, it doesn't make you selfish. It makes you brave. I'm Nelia, and this is the Giving Starts With You podcast. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Giving Starts With You podcast. I'm your host, Nelia Hutt. This show tries to end loneliness and tries to just make a community of like-minded people and people who want more for their themselves, their lives, live better, understand themselves better, the road to inner peace and just finding ourselves and finding what we're passionate about and just answering the question who we are, you know, who are we? Um, it's pretty profound and I'm hoping that you guys are listening and you're, you're sensing from the guests on the show that you are getting a bit closer. You're getting a bit closer to the answers that you need and um, through people's stories and through their experiences that you're finding that community and you're finding that community of self and similar minded people. Today, we have Maureen Ross Jem. Welcome, Maureen, to the show. How are you today? Um, well, thank you so much for having me, Nelia. Oh, I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you for coming. And I know how busy you are and how how much work you're putting out there into the world and you're changing lives. And I'm just honored and so, so blessed to have you here today. I am dying to get right in because I know we've got some fun stuff today. But I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my guest. So Maureen Ross Jem, clean and sober since 1985 is a leadership trainer, a coach, and podcast host who loves to help people step into their full potential at work and in life. She loves playing with her four grandchildren, and she loves riding motorcycles, but not at the same time. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> Thank goodness. Today, we are going to speak to Maureen, or Maureen is going to speak to us about leveraging our personality at work and in relationships She's going to talk about what the four DISC types are, D-I-S-C. I cannot wait to find out what this is about. So Maureen, where are you tuning in from today? I am calling in from Windsor Locks, Connecticut in the Northeast of the U.S. And it is a rainy day here and we're so grateful because we need the rain. Yeah. Mm, and it is so sunny and hot here, but we're grateful because we need the sun because okay. we, we just, yeah, we don't get enough of it here in Canada, in uh, north of Toronto here. So Maureen, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got interested in this topic of personality. Okay, sure. Well, as you said in my little introduction there, I'm in recovery from drug addiction and alcoholism. And so my teenage years, I was pretty out there, right? And when I got finally reached out and got the help I needed, I was 24 years old. Um, I always had a strong work ethic, but I couldn't really do anything. I couldn't grow. I couldn't reach my potential. I really didn't know who I was because I was out there just using and escaping my feelings. Um, so I was constantly running from the chaos I was creating. And I also was looking for who am I really? You know, I always had this question about myself. So when I got reached out and got that help, I got into a 12 step recovery program and I began my journey to figure out who Maureen really was. And after I was living in Texas at the time, and then I moved back home to Connecticut, that was a geographical cure. I tried to, to maneuver and it kind of worked because I did get sober, <laughs> but um, that wasn't my intention when I first left. It was 
you know, I, I was left because it was the people that he, were here that just sucked and I just didn't want anything to do with them. But, you know, there's a loneliness, there's this hole that we have inside of us when we're trying to fill it with something, drugs, alcohol, gaming, shopping. It doesn't matter what your addiction is, food, right? And there's so much that we fill, try to fill that emptiness inside. And I finally, I, I, I got to such a low point it wasn't helping at all anymore. In fact, it was making it worse. So um, once I got clean and sober, I did move back to Connecticut after about a year and I met my husband. Now we've been together for 34 years and I, I've been sober over 37 years. Or I'm in my 38th and I started on in this career. So in my career, I continued to work on my personal growth because, you know, I just am a very, very strong believer that personal growth leads to professional growth. It just, mm -hmm. it happens automatically. I mean, you can kick and fight and elbow your way up the corporate ladder, but the truth is you don't have to, you can take the elevator up if you just start working on yourself and really get to know yourself. So because I did that in my thirties, I was really into the Myers-Briggs type mm -hmm. indicator and I, I got really into speed reading people. Yeah. And understanding I'm an ENFJP. I'm kind of right on the line there with the J and the P, but I, I'm not going to talk about that today. But then in my forties, I got into another personality type called the Enneagram. If you haven't heard of that, it, it's very complex, but super accurate. It's an ancient Sufi tradition that used to be an oral tradition. And now it's, you know, the kind of got hijacked by the the Jesuit priests and the monks, the Franciscan friars and everybody, but they've done a great job with kind of translating it and sharing that with the world. And then finally, in my fifties, I got into the everything disc. This is a Wiley and Sons brand. And I'm a, um, I, what you call a, I'm an authorized partner for everything disc. So I do disc training and I left my corporate job after 30, no, after about 27 years. And I started my own business called Emerge Leadership Academy. And in my, in my time here as an entrepreneur, I have been able to train over 2,500 people in how to understand and leverage their personality. Because the DISC um, personality is the easiest one to explain mm -hmm. and also to use at work and to identify other people in your life. So um, yes, I'm, I'd be happy to explain it to you and then we'll figure out what you are. Although you, you may already know if you're, if you're already into this kind of stuff. No. All First right. of all, I got to say congratulations on all of those years Thank of you. sobriety that, yeah, that's a long time. Congratulations. And, you know, I got to tell you, I love Myers-Briggs when it came, you know, when I was a teenager and going through school, that's what they were doing. And I'm an NF. INFJ, I believe, for that. And going to church, um, they handed out the Enneagram book <laughs> to everybody. And so every week they did a like um a sort of they preached a little bit about each chapter and what each thing meant. It was really cool. We did it in a group. And I have not been introduced to the new one that you're talking about. So okay. I'm interested. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. And so what are you on the Enneagram? I'm just curious. Oh, I think I'm a five, but I'm, you know, I can't remember right now. Sorry. It's been a little while, but um, yeah. Do you, do you know, I forget the names of them. Do you remember what they are? <clears throat> I'm like the giver. So the one. Yeah. Okay. Two. That oh, would be two. a two. Okay. That's me. <laughs> That's the two. The over giver right? Which is what your audience it, it may be also feeling because these are the ones that get burnt out the quickest because they're just constantly giving, giving because they want that validation back in. They want to be needed and loved and accepted. And, you know, there's two fears that everyone has. I don't care what personality type you are. Two fears that everyone has. Do you know what they are? What would you guess? Uh, fear of not belonging. 
Yeah. So the, the fear of not belonging, the way I say it is the fear that you won't be loved or accepted. Right. So we have that fear and we also have a fear that we're not enough, mm. not enough, not pretty enough, skinny enough, smart enough, tall enough, rich enough, you name it. Right. And those two fears underlying uh, are, you know, the reason why a lot of our human behavior or our beliefs are backed up by those fears. And if we can get past those, um, then you're, you know, you can accomplish so much in your life, but those fears hold us back a lot, or they keep us serving or over serving others. And we have to learn to really serve ourselves first, put ourselves first. Okay. So I'm going to share the four, um, disc types, and then we'll talk about yours. Okay. Okay. All right. So the first one, um, well, first of all, if you can imagine a circle, uh, we call it the disc map, D-I-S-C, going around top left, all the way around the circle. And each letter obviously stands for um, the, you know, sort of the, the label, if you will. But this isn't meant to label anyone. We are all, all we have parts of all of these personalities within us, but there's one that's probably much more natural or a fallback, right, for you. And there might be two of them. You might be right in between, or you might have a primary and a secondary, that kind of thing. So we'll talk about that when we get there too. But the first one is D. So the D stands for dominance. And the dominant type, we all know these types of leaders, these folks are, they are very results driven. They are, they are going after what they want. Um, they're direct. They're very firm. They are sometimes forceful and strong willed, I would say. Okay. So they, they drive for results and they are super creative. They're good problem solvers too, because they want to overcome obstacles to get to what they want. And let's do it now. I mean, yesterday now <laughs> that's like the extreme. Okay. But, um, so, so those are, they can also sometimes put that forcefulness feel like not as much tact as we would like them to have. Okay. So the next one over, um, is the is the I, and th this is the influence. It stands for influence or influencer. And the influence type is very gregarious and friendly. They like people. Whereas the dominance folks are more task oriented. The I folks um, influence is more people focused. I'm not sure I, understand. I think Siri's talking. <laughs> So the I is the outgoing, enthusiastic, they are collaborative, they love to um, chat with people all the time, they're very lively and high spirited. Okay, so these are your folks that when they walk in the room, they sort of command attention, they might be the class clown, they're, you know, Crack, uh, cracking jokes, they they laugh at everything. Or if there's tension in the room, they might crack the joke and to try okay. to dissuade the the tension in the room. Hmm. All right, and then we get down to the S, and the S folks are also people oriented, like the I's. The S stands for steadiness, but the S's are a little bit more reserved in nature. They are more quiet. And these are your givers. These are the support, the awesome support people behind all of the doers, okay? Not that they, they're also doers, but they're super good resource people because they connect with people. The problem is they don't know when to say no. They overcommit because they want people to like them or they overaccommodate sometimes, okay? And they're, but they're very patient and they're humble and they're very tactful and kind. These are very kind people, okay? So those are your S's. A lot of times um, teachers will get into that field because they want, they really want to nurture and care and, and nurses sometimes get into this, um, or that might be a field of an S um, because they want to genuinely help other people. Um, they're even tempered. All right, so now we move into the last one, which is the C, and that stands for conscientiousness. Now, the conscientiousness folks are 
these are your kind of engineer types. They're more mm. in their head. They're very analytical, uh, precision focused, uh, quality uh, focus for sure. They want to make sure that they give you an awesome product, that it doesn't have any mistakes, that it's perfect. Sometimes they can be that kind of, I want to get it right. They double and triple check things. They're very good with numbers and systems and processes, mm -hmm. right? So we all know people like that too, like the professors of the world, they like to do research, but they're also can get into uh, a level of expertise that they know so much about something that they become trainers or experts and they want to share their knowledge too. They want to give that away. Um, but they're more task focused and they not, are not as people focused in that regard, in, you know, in regards to what's fun, mm. uh, put me in a cubicle and give me a job. Uh, but what's fun for the eyes and the S's are more like, Oh, is there going to be some sort of happy hour after work? Or, you know, like <laughs> maybe not, the, maybe not the S's as much, but certainly the I's and the D's. Mm. Okay. So let's talk about, um, do you have any questions first of all about the D I S or C? Uh, no, no questions, but I can see how they are very different and most people would be one and have like dominance and then another, you know, more a combination. Yep. Yeah. So the, when you take the full assessment, psychological assessment, your map, your dot will fall somewhere in the map and there will be a shaded area that goes into all of the okay. types, but there's usually one quadrant or two that is your prior priority. So you might fall right between the C and the S. And, you know, in that case, you're going to be, you're going to have that um, um, sort of, you're going to be thoughtful, calm, uh, methodical, tactful, objective, more objective. So then like the, if you fill between the D and the I, you're, you're going to be more active, mm -hmm. fast paced, assertive, dynamic and bold, right? Interesting. But, and mm -hmm. you could fall between the D and the C and you have another sort of set of qualities, questioning, logical, skeptical, mm -hmm. um, challenging. The and D then, and the C, that would be an interesting combo. Oh, I, we, the, every, yeah. they're all, they're yeah. all listening. They're listening right now. There are some people that definitely fall there. Mm -hmm. And then there's, the, if you fall between the I and the S, then you have your receptive, empathetic, collaborative, let's get the team going and have a good time while we're doing it kind of folks. Mm -hmm. awesome. So where do you think you fall, Nelia? Oh, you know, I think I have a little bit of the I, S, and C, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Um, so you're, more the S, I think, not so much the outgoing personality of the influence, but more the S, I believe. Yeah, I'm thinking the S too, because that you describe that right away, that you are, um, you're a giver and S's are givers. Their primary motivators are, they want stability, yes, collaboration, and they're supportive. They're very supportive people. Okay. So that is, um, and then obviously you go into both wings and a little bit into the D. So for example, when your feet are to the fire and you got to get something going, you, you can step up and say like to the kids, get in the car, you know, like, you know. <laughs> yes. right. There's always circumstances where you can uh, use whatever you need to, to get what it is that you need to get done. But for the most part, like in work environments, we have teams and sometimes it takes a lot more energy to be in the D space. If you're an S it takes a mm. lot more energy. And at the end of the day, you're exhausted. Like if you're dealing with crisis all the time and like you say, you're in a medical environment and you're an S and you're supportive and loving and you want to just go in and find out how the patient's doing. And you got somebody that's cracking a whip behind you and you've got to give directions to everybody. It's incredibly stressful to have to. You just spelled out my role. life. <laughs> I do work in a, in a medical environment. Oh, I, really? Okay. I don't. I don't look after the patients necessarily. I work after the admin staff and stuff like that. But yeah, I just. 
I want it to be more people oriented than data and all of these things. So sometimes I struggle with that for sure, for sure. And so now I want you and your listeners to eat, to think about if you, hopefully everybody's sort of self-identified where they fall. Now I want you to think about somebody that, that you have a little bit of a conflict with, or that you is not easy to work with. Okay. Somebody that is like, you could definitely, some days you think I am definitely going to quit this job because I can't stand working with so-and-so, right? That's the type of, but you know what? There's always a so-and-so wherever you go, right? There's, they, they show up because I, I think they show up because they are angels to help you to work through what you have to work through right? To, mm. to stand up, to speak up, to ha find your voice, if that's what your issue is, or to back off, to slow down, to bite your tongue, if that's what your issue is. And so there's, there's all kinds of metaphysical sort of reasons why, but in the big scheme of things, I'm going to ask you to, I'm going to ask you two questions, but first I want you to have that person in your mind. Do you have that person in yep. your mind? Okay. So is this person more, 50% more or more greater, more fast paced and outgoing, or are they more cautious and reflective? They, no. They're going to be both at certain times, yeah. depending, but more the first, so the first one. fast paced and outgoing. Okay. Yes, very and much. then the second question would be, are they more warm and friendly or questioning and skeptical that's a good one because it's sort of i'm trying to see which one is more um can you say them again please yep so that they're either questioning and skeptical or warm and friendly so the questioning and skeptical or the warm and friendly is more I i'll trust you before you can be before you can prove you have to you don't have to prove to no. me that you can be trusted. <laughs> Or the other one is, I don't trust you until you That's, prove to me that yes, you can be trusted. that one. <laughs> and in fact, so, I had somebody in mind when you talked about the fourth, when you were labeling them already. So. Yeah. So that means that that person is, I'm guessing, a D, right? Yes. Because the Ds are fast-paced and outgoing and questioning and skeptical. Okay. They want to get to the truth of it. They want to jump the hurdles. They want to crash down the obstacles and they step on toes sometimes to do it. Now, now, obviously with any personality type, you have to remember that personality is not everything. You also have personality disorders. Sometimes you also have a set of values. You have beliefs, mm -hmm. you have experiences and skills. You also have education and training. Um, these are all factors at play and not to mention culture that they might be from or how they were raised, right? Some yes. people were raised in very dysfunctional families and others were raised in very, you know, happy, loving, functional families, but that all plays a role. It's not just all personality type, but mm -hmm. if you can identify that personality, you can, it's easier Nelia, to forgive somebody like, okay, they're absolutely. Just, they're not stepping on my toes. They're just trying to get the job done. I'm not going to take this person personally. Yeah. Yes. And the person I am speaking about uh, is a friend of mine. So I know that the dominance is there and yes, it can be hard to work with sometimes, but it can be a blessing at sometimes as well, because like you said, they do help me find my voice when I can't. So it's sort Good. of like a give and take relationship, but. And they push you a little bit. Yes, but not always when you ask for it. Right. So sometimes when you don't ask for it, it can feel like a little like bullying. Yes, right? absolutely. Come on. you're good. And then when you, when you do need a kick in the butt or a, a fire lit, you, you can contact them and say, absolutely, oh, help me get out of this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good thing. So just for the rest of them, for your listeners, if you chose that they were fast paced and outgoing and warm and friendly, then you have yourself an I, m most likely an influencer. If you chose they were warm and friendly, but cautious and reflective, mm. more cautious and reflective, then you have an S. These are more introverted, you know, kind, slower paced, um, 
S folks. They don't like to take a lot of risks. They want stability. And then you have, if you have um, somebody who is also cautious and reflective and questioning and skeptical, that's where you have your C's because they're more precision oriented and they, um, they want to make sure it's right. And mm -hmm. they don't, they're not very emotional people and they can seem mm -hmm. sometimes cold and aloof or like they don't have a sense of humor or sometimes we can't even read them because they just have these like blank faces. Whereas mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm all over the place sometimes, you know, <laughs> and like, and that's um, the C. Well, the C is very um, professional, crisp, right to the point, or not, maybe not right to the point, but certainly a quiet. And then they 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 ponder things, overanalyze maybe sometimes, mm. but they get a really good product or they, they're super quality conscious. Mm. So how that looks like for somebody like me, well, first of all, what do you think I am, Nelia? You've only known me for a couple of minutes. Where do you think I fall? An I and a C. Well, you you know, hardly ever get the cross Doubles. okay functions, right? So uh, that th those would be the opposites. Okay, yes. Um, so you had it right the first one. I'm an I. I'll just tell you. I, so I'm an I'm an, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm an I, and what what sometimes happens, like the reason why you want to know what you are and like what your boss is or what you know, this person that you have to work with is. So for me, like sometimes the C's drive me crazy because I can't really read them. Mm. And they, they, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve. People, you always know where you stand with me. I'm very clear. I will tell you if you, you know, if you uh, said something that I took a hit on, or if I think that there's something going on between us, like I will talk about it. I want to know what you're feeling. I want to, cause I want to be friends all the time. I want things to be good and happy. Whereas the C's are like, that's none of your business. How I feel you should be leaving your emotions at the door. Mm. Yeah, I don't want to talk about, you know, I, they hate drama. <laughs> and so, so if I have a boss like that, it's really important for me to know it. So now when I go into my boss, I'm going to be very planned. I'm going to have all my lists in order, all the details. If I need a decision on something, I'm not going to go in there and say, Hey, how's it going? What was your weekend? I'm, I'm not going to waste their time with, you know, I might say, how was your weekend, but I'll be more subdued in it so that they can relate to me better. You see what I mean? Yes, absolutely. And as you're, as you're saying that I have three bosses and as you're saying that, um, they're all very different and I do approach them all in different ways because of that, but I think I can do it a little more clearer now, you know, when yeah, and I can, yeah, I can identify them already. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and it will, it will help you with the communications because the more rapport you can build by being their style. So now that's not all the time, right? Cause you still want to be your authentic self mm. and you don't want to be putting some mask on or trying to be what you're not. But, but if you know the style, then you don't, you don't have to waste their time. So when you're going into your boss, who's a D into their office, you're not going to waste your time. Uh, you're going to tell them right away and be very direct, even though you might not ever talk to an I or another S like that. You'd be like, Hey, you know, how's it going? And whatever you, you'd have a little chit chat first and say, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind, but the D's are like, stop beating around the bush, get to the point. Time is money. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, there are ways to do both like to, to, to not waste their time, like you're saying, and be direct with them and give them what they need up front, but also kind of throw a little bit of yourself in there too. Yeah. Well, you can certainly be your friendly self. Absolutely. And know that you're just getting your job done, right? That That's mm -hmm. really what we're there for. We're not there for social, although I would like to make the whole party social. <laughs> but this is a project team and we have a goal and we have an agenda. And so shut up Maureen and get, you know, let's get to work. But that's the things that you learn. So the biggest piece of advice that I give to your D's and your I's mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. is zip it. Learn to listen more. Learn to listen more. Listen, listen, listen. Mm-hmm. Stop talking. And not take things personally. Um, with, yeah, with the always. Well, yeah. the D's, they don't care. Oh, yeah. They you yeah. they never take anything personally. They don't. <laughs> you can say whatever Just you business. want to them. You're yes. fine. Yes. They, they, they're not going to be hurt by you. But then with your C's and your S's, what, what advice do you think I'm going to give to them? <sighs> it's going to be the opposite. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. We want them to speak up more. Yeah. To share their voice, to share their ideas and their opinions and stop letting those extroverts bully you or, you know, right. Talk yeah. over you. It's time to speak up. Exactly. Without feeling guilty about it and without feeling that if you're, if people aren't receptive, that it means there's something wrong with you. Right. So the receptive is a perfect example of an emotional intelligence or a mindset that is very easy for the S's. Okay. Recept being receptive and empathetic is very easy for the S that's their natural fallback mindset. Okay. Mm -hmm. I bet you Nelia, you have a lot of people that confide in you and they come and talk to you. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Because you're a good listener and you care, right? Mm -hmm. So then you have your D's and your C's they're their fallback, or let's just go to the D. Their fallback is they're very um, confident and self assured, and they also challenge. They also mm. um, are resolute often in their ideas. And so they're opinionated and they come across that way. But don't you think sometimes then to get for the S that they need to step into resolute? and self-assured because sometimes they are instead of just going sliding back into i'll accommodate you because i don't want a conflict it's important to step up and do that and also for the d's it's important for them to sometimes step back and let the s you know and be more receptive to other ideas and be more empathetic and listen to what's going on with somebody and care about what's going on with somebody. So those are the ways that you can expand out of your comfort zone to expand your emotional intelligence using the disc. And it's so, so good for teams. Mm -hmm. So everybody gets to know what everybody is. And then you can say, I know who to go to for certain things now. Yeah. I could see why that's so important. And sometimes people just need to pause. I can see why knowing your disc type can really help you not only communicate with other people, but get the most out of your time at work. Right now with relationships, I can see how that could really break or make a friendship or a marriage, or what are your insights to do with relationships with the disc? Do you have any suggestions? Well, I have talked to a lot of people. I've done some, some research but I'm not sure I've really been able to come up with any conclusions based on that research. I will say that sometimes opposites attract, right? So I'm a high I, I'm on the outside of the map and my husband is an SC, kind of right on the line, Mm. midway down. So um, that's an opposite, but we are both very intuitive and we're both very caring. And those are strong values of mine and his, right? So we, we, we're committed, we get along great. And in fact, we, how do you say, compliment each other. Hmm. So when we're going away, I know when to count on him for certain things. But there's other times I'm like way too trusting and he's skeptical and he's telling me, don't just trust that person. Like, wait a minute, what are you doing? And I'm, you know, I'm, of course I'm going to trust them. So it's 
So sometimes there's some different mindsets involved and different, but it helps me. It helps me to see another side of it. Then though, if you have two D's in a relationship, they're Mm -hmm. butting heads all the time. And it can be a lot of conflict because they always want to be right or get their way. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, Right. Mm -hmm. So it depends, but I've seen two C's together and they are just happier than anything because everybody, everything's right in a row. They got the systems and the processes going. And so it depends. It all depends on how committed you are. Mm -hmm. Right. And how much, um, you want to, uh, work on that relationship. Every relationship. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I see how two D's can be conflicting and a little bit difficult, but I think if people do take the time to learn about their personality types, then they can allow themselves, you know, some give and take and learn. The more you know about yourself, the more you can maybe alter it a little bit when you're dealing with other people, you can still be your authentic self. For well, sure. that's the point. Yeah. But the yes, and so the more you learn about yourself, yes, I can see how it can affect your workplace and how you, you let's say, go up the ladder or you don't go up the corporate ladder or how your relationships work out or even how happy you are in your own life. You know, there's so many parts of living your authentic self. And like you said, personality is not all of it. You have your childhood influences. You have all of these other things that play into it. But this is surely an important and interesting, um, an interesting part of it, right? Yeah, and it is. And, you know, the thing is, excuse me, when you, whenever you need to play a role that's a little bit uncomfortable for you, you're expanding yourself, right? You just think of it about that. You expand your circle of comfort a little bit. You step into that. You're going to get what you want a lot easier than if you just go in and you're an eye and you're just cracking jokes and like, you're not going to get what you want anyway. So just, you know, get into your serious persona and bring it in there. Cause we all have that. We all have everything within us. It's just that sometimes it's more comfortable Mm -hmm. if we stay in what's more natural to us, but it's so much easier to get what you want done and to build those relationships by stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit, then you can step back in. You don't (laughs) have to be out there all the time. So that's what I tell people. And and it really is good in a professional relationship and when you're at work, Uh, but at home, you, you know, it's easy for me to say, Oh, you're being skeptical. (laughs) It's true. It's true. Cause it's not just understanding yourself, but taking the patience and pausing and understanding the other people so that you can blend better. You can give and take better. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it works. I know that you have on your website a quiz about how to find what best animal represents your lifestyle. Leader. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So the 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 animal quiz is uh, really just my fun way, right, of helping somebody understand their type be, and to get them interested before they take the full psychological assessment. So mm-hmm. it's fun. It's only seven questions. And obviously, if you alter your answers a little bit, it might turn out that you're, you know, you'll get an answer of what you're not really, right? <laughs> But if you are honest as you can be and answer those questions, um, I, there's, I put four animals to the four disc styles. Okay. So if you are a, a D, then what animal do you think represents the D? Uh, like a lion, tiger? Close. It's a wolf. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> the wolf, right? The wolf is going after what they want all the time, but they, mm. they do it for the betterment of the pack. Yes. Okay. And then the eye um, is represented by the dolphin, very oh. happy, chatty, friendly, <laughs> social family creature. And then you have your S steadiness, which is represented by the, the St. Bernard, because oh, okay. St. Bernard is loyal and they come to your rescue. Mm. And although in my world, they don't have brandy in their flask. They have green tea. Okay. So- <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And they won't leave your side until 
they're, you know, they're, they're really like that. They're that kind of supportive, you know, animal. And then finally the C um, conscientiousness style style is represented by uh, the beaver, very oh, okay. precision oriented and precise and builds this system in this whole beautiful environment for everybody to live in. Wow. That's great. I'm interested in doing that. Um, I know we haven't really talked about it yet, but you've got a book out, Seven Steps to Transformation. Yeah. Do you want to tell us quickly a little bit about your book? Sure. My book is called Emerge, Seven Steps to Transformation, No Matter What Life Throws at You, mm. which is really good during COVID because life throws us curveballs all the time. And when we have a a victimizer inside, we can blame outside circumstances for our unhappiness and our discomfort. But if you want to transform your life into a more happy, well-rounded, adjusted, you know, person, regardless of what career you're in or what job you're in, um, then I would recommend that book. This is what it looks like. It's got the. Beautiful. Oh I love the cover. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and um i did write that with it's kind of like my vip coaching program in a, mm. in a 20 dollar format so you know that's all awesome the, there's worksheets and everything else in there that you can use to um, but you know those seven steps are first we have to uh really figure out our personality how who we are right then we have to look at our belief system and understand that we hold ourselves back for the most part then you also got to take a, a kind of an inventory about who you're holding resentments against and do some forgiveness work because forgiveness will will unblock a lot of emotional blocks and they do keep us stuck a lot of times it's not just about you know rewriting your resume if you want to go for something bigger it's about looking at what's, yeah. you know, what are you afraid of? What's holding you back? Then we learn how to work with our energy. Our energy is so important, our vibrational levels. And there's not just the law of attraction, but there's the law of compensation, the law of reciprocity, the law of, you know, uh, cause and effect and the law of action, you know, so there's so much universal law that goes into how are you using your energy to create? And then of course you have to do your values inventory. What are your values and so forth. So there's a lot of meat in there that you can do some deep personal growth work and really um, turn your life around if you want That's to. Great. Great. Where can we find your book? Well, it's on Amazon. So if you, uh, it's best to probably search for me, Maureen Ross Gem, uh, if you wanted to, but hopefully you can just put it in your show notes and people can link to it. I will. I will absolutely. Thank you. My Thank show you notes. so much. And you've got a podcast. What's the name of your podcast? Yes, I do. My podcast is called Emerge, Evolve, Lead. It's for people in recovery and it's a 30 minute episode comes out every week. I talk to people who have transformed their lives and stepped into uh, recovery. That's about 80% of my guests. Then there's some guests who are not in recovery per se, but they help or they have something to offer for people who are uh, looking for more personal growth work or um, some sort of, um, you know, improvement in their lives. Cause we love to improve our lives, right? Everybody <laughs> should be working on improving their life. Yes. Um, there's no reason why we should be stuck in any kind of misery. So yeah. So I Absolutely. talk to people on, um, on that podcast and it's wherever you listen to podcasts, you'll find it. That's so great, Maureen. It was so fun. And, you know, just enlightening to, to, to hear you speak today. And thank you for introducing me to the disc. And thanks for introducing the audience to the disc. I'm interested in what people are going to say. So that should be fun. Um, what well, I would love to, yes. I just want to say one more thing that you can get to that quiz. It's right on my website at emergeleadershipacademy.com. And you'll see the quiz right there. There's only seven questions that will put you on my, um, on my 
news uh, newsletter list, but you can unsubscribe at any time if you, but I just send out tips and tricks and also a link to the podcast for the week, that kind of thing. Well, that sounds great. I'll have to get right on that. Thank you so much. Is there anything we didn't talk about today that you would like to say or that we didn't cover? Just, that you want? No, we, we did cover what, what I wanted to say, but I just want to reinforce that um, you are really doing a huge service to helping people to get into understanding not only who they are, but that if you don't put self-care number one, if you don't start taking care of you, then you're not being of service, the service that you could be to the people in your life that you love. And when you, you know, it's like I say, inner leadership, you know, is what begets good leadership in the world or inner peace creates world peace. That inner work that you can, that your listeners can put into their selves is so, so important. And so I strongly, um, you know, just want to send everybody virtual hugs. You're <laughs> not alone. It is the struggle being human, but the more you learn that you are in control, the more better your life will become more better. <laughs> what, a, what a beautiful message. Thank you so much, Maureen. And you're, uh, welcome. you're welcome back anytime. Thank you for sharing everything that you have today with our audience. Thank you, Nelia. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode. If you enjoyed what you heard, please subscribe or leave a review. See you next week on the Giving Starts With You podcast.